guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today starts another reading vlog, so stay tuned. So it is currently Monday, March 25th, and that means it's time for another reading vlog. And it's also sequel-a-thon, and I'm excited about today because today is Xander's birthday and oh my gosh he's 13 today he's a teenager can you believe it real quick on what I would like to try to accomplish reading this week the top two books that I would like to get to this week would be Lola and the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins this is a book that I had wanted to read during the spring into reading a thon, but I didn't get to it, so I'm making this one a priority for the sequel a thon. And also, Xander and I need to finish Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. We're currently only on page 246 and need to finish this for Potter Watch. And that live show is on the 30th this month on my channel, which is this week, I believe. Yes, it is this week. And that's with your book nerd, Zoe. And yeah, so we have a lot of reading to do to finish that. But I gave Xander his birthday present earlier, and he's already opened it. He's already charged it up, and now he wants to write it. So I thought I'd film that. You just lean forward. It's very much sensitive to turning. Why is it going like this? Because you're going like that. Yeah, you're doing good. What do you think? It's weird <laughs> because it's Give us a thumbs up. Oh, hey. Look at you. Happy birthday, Xander. Happy birthday, Mom. <laughs> My birthday's in a couple of months still. You like it? Yes, I'll run over your foot. Don't run over my foot. Hey, Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Xander. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Now blow out the candles. Good job. Yay! So it is Tuesday, March 26th, and I just got done with like my hair and makeup, and I filmed my Owl's Magical Readathon TBR, and I'm so excited about that. I um, decided to go with the career of Aurora, and I don't think that's going to be a problem to read the, the books that are needed for that, and I may actually go and read all 12 Owls if I have time, and well, if I get my boxes unpacked. But now I have to go and work on editing my Spring Into reading a -thon vlog because I haven't gotten that edited yet and get it uploaded and all of that good stuff. And I'm also doing school with Xander right now. He's in the other room, but yeah, lots of stuff going on. But I just wanted to kind of check in with you. I actually don't have my Lola and the Boy Next Door with me at the moment it's in the dining room but I think I'm about a quarter of the way through something like that I'm making my way and Xander and I are going to work on Harry Potter and Death the Deathly Hollows this evening which I mean I think we have like this much already done like uh, maybe a quarter of that I don't know and uh, we're gonna try to get a quarter done today another quarter done tomorrow and the last of it done on thursday yeah we're gonna be listening to the audiobook because i can't read that out loud for that long 
Um, and so with the audiobook, we have about seven and a half hours remaining. So we're going to do two and a half hours a night, tonight, tomorrow, and the next night. And then Friday, we're going to watch both movies. So hopefully we can get it all done because on Saturday is the live show for Potter Watch. So I got to get that done. I need to clean up this mess from my video that I just filmed and get some lunch and get back to Xander. <laughs> all right, I'll talk to you later. So it is like 10.30 at night on Tuesday the 26th still. I only read a couple more pages of Lola and the Boy Next Door. I'm currently on page 94 of this. Hi, Sasha. Xander and I read or listened to quite a bit of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows, and we are on page 477 now. So we only have this much left. Gotta finish it this week. And I forgot to mention earlier that I went by the post office and I had a package. So I entered this giveaway hosted by Barbara Centini and I'll link her channel down below. But apparently I think I was the only person to enter. So I won. <sighs> My battery's gonna die. I gotta go find a backup battery. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, now that I got that battery changed, let's look at what I got. Okay, so she sent me The Kingdom of Copper, which is the sequel to City of Brass. And I can't remember if I've gotten City of Brass yet or not. I might have gotten that in one of my subscription boxes. I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to see when I get everything unpacked. But let me see. Oh, and this book did come out January of 2019, so it is out now, and it's by S.A. Chakraborty. Okay, so I just pulled up on Goodreads what it says about the City of Brass, which has a very high rating. It's like 4.18. It says, Nahari has never believed in magic. Certainly she has power. On the streets of 18th century Cairo, she's a con woman of unsurpassed talent. But she knows better than anyone that the trade she use, uses to get by, palm readings, czars, healings, are all tricks, sleights of hand, learned skills, a means to the delightful end of swindling Ottoman nobles. But when Nahari accidentally summons an equally sly, darkly mysterious Jinn warrior to her side, during one of her cons, she's forced to accept that the magical world she thought only existed in childhood stories is real. For the warrior tells her a new tale. Across hot windswept sands, teeming with creatures of fire and rivers where the mythical Marad, Mir, Marid, Marid, sleep, past ruins of once magnificent human metropolises and mountains where the circling hawks are not what they seem, lies Devabad, the legendary city of Brass, a city to which Nahari is irrevocably bound. In that city, behind gilded brass walls laced with enchantments, behind the six gates of the Jinn tribes, old resentments are simmering. And when Nahari decides to enter this world, she learns that true power is fierce and brutal, that magic cannot shield her from the dangerous web of court politics, that even the cleverest of schemes can have deadly consequences. After all, there is a reason they say, be careful what you wish for. Cool, cool. Um, I see that this is, like, from somebody else's review, they put, uh, it's an own voices, young adult, uh, romance, Muslim rep, fantasy. Cool. All right. And he sent me a little letter and a cute, really cute little bookmark i think it's a magnetic bookmark maybe no it's a it's like a paper bookmark it looks like this but it it folds so you can like put it between your pages like a magnetic bookmark i suppose came in this little slip here very cool thank you so much barbara and i'll make sure to put her link to her channel down below all right, well, I guess that's it for today. I'm 
going to go and work on a video. I've edited a video earlier, my like spring into reading a thon vlog, and I thought it was saved or saving. And then tonight I went to go and try to do everything to upload it and found that it wasn't saved. And so I looked and it was like frozen on 0%. I'm like, oh. and it was like malfunctioning and stuff. So I'm trying to get that saved now and then I can get it uploaded and all of that good stuff. And then my friend Donna, who you will see in my Spring into reading a -thon vlog, a tiny little clip. She's coming over tomorrow and we're going to work on painting Xander's room. So I'm not entirely sure how much reading I'll get done. We'll see. All right. I'll talk to you tomorrow. So it is currently about almost 11 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, March 27th. And dude, I'm tired. <laughs> so I didn't end up painting today because that was my plan. Um, my friend Donna was going to come over and we were going to paint, but something came up and she wasn't able to come over. So instead I did some editing because I had a couple of videos that needed to be edited. And uh, I don't think I listened to any of Lola and the Boy Next Door, but Xander and I did listen to a lot of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. And we are currently on page 619 of this. So we only have this much left. And our goal is to finish this tomorrow. Yeah. And last year when uh, G over at Book Roast hosted her Charms Extra Credit Readathon, I earned five days of extra credit for that. So technically I was allowed to start my charms for the Owls Readathon today, but I just, I didn't start. <laughs> so hopefully I can get to that tomorrow because, well, I still have four extra days and I do want to take advantage of those because the charms is to read an adult book and I know typically they read a little bit slower than YA, but the book that I'm reading for that is a thriller, I believe, so it shouldn't be too slow. And it's also one of my Once Upon a Book Club subscription box books. And I'm excited to read it and open all the goodies. And um, yeah, so tomorrow I'm going to try and start that. Tomorrow, Xander and I are going to try to finish this. And maybe tomorrow I'll try to also finish Lola and the Boy Next Door. I don't know. Also, tomorrow my friend Donna is going to come over and we're going to paint. But first, I have to get up early and Xander's got a doctor's appointment in the morning. It's going to be a busy day tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe I'll take The Night Olivia Fell, which is my uh, book for charms. Maybe I'll take that with me when Xander goes to the doctor. So I can be reading that at the doctor's office. And... We can listen to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows on our way to and from the doctor's office. Yeah. Let me visit the A. I'm slurring my words because I'm so tired. Okay. I'm going to go to bed and I will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Good night. So it is like about 5 o'clock on Thursday, March 28th. And uh, my day has not gone as planned. So I overslept <laughs> and then I did wake up in enough time for Xander and I to get to his doctor's appointment on time, but not much more could be done before that. And then I had running around to do. Yeah, so we didn't get home till late and I didn't get painting done yet, unfortunately. I might possibly try to work on that tonight. I don't know, we'll see. While we were at the doctor's office, I did read just a little bit. I got to page 18 of The Night Olivia Fell, which is my charms for the magical readathon. So, started it. And then Xander and I listened to approximately 40 pages worth of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows on our way to and from. I think we're at page around page 659. And I had some packages that were delivered to the other house and one of them was kind of in bad shape because we had some weather so 
it got rained on and stuff and so it's looking like this and I'm hoping the stuff inside is not destroyed because yeah, the box is looking pretty rough but this is my totally booked crate and I love this box and I love the owner of this box also I got my ooh, next once upon a book club box I think this is the March one that I ordered I'm not in a subscription right now but this is just one that I picked out because I had like a coupon for it so I thought I would do a quick little opening up these for you unboxing okay so the once upon a book club one looks like this this is their March adult box and I'm not going to go through and open these gifts because I do that when I'm reading the box but oh this is cute the gift for page 72 it's like a little triangle like faux leather clutch cute then we got our little print here and it's a quote from Marilyn Monroe it says a wise girl knows her limits but a smart girl knows she has none and then there is a letter here from or no sorry to Marilyn Monroe from author for Arthur Freeman cool we've got our book club perks and the book is The Beautiful Strangers by Camille de Mayo and I don't know this just it sounded so interesting to me when I was reading like I figured out the hints and figured out what book it was going to be so I, that's why I picked this one and it says a legendary hotel on the Pacific becomes a haven where dreams love and a beguiling mystery come alive 1958 Kate Morgan, tethered to her family's failing San Francisco restaurant, is looking for an escape. She gets her chance by honoring a cryptic plea from her grandfather, find the beautiful stranger. The search takes her to Hotel del Coronado, the beachfront landmark on the Southern California coast where filming is underway on the movie Some Like It Hot. For a movie lover like Kate, it's a fantasy come true. So is the author of a position at the Glamorous Hotel. And a new romance is making her heart beat just as fast. But as sure as she is that Coronado is her future, Kate discovers it's also where the ghosts of the past have come to stay. Sixty years ago, a guest died tragically, and she still haunts the hotel's halls. As the lives of two women, generations apart, intertwine, Kate's courageous journey could change more than she ever imagined, and with Coronado winding its way through her soul, she must follow her dreams wherever they may lead. And I just thought it sounded super interesting. And then we also have a gift. Oh, the letter here. Oh, this is for page 285. And then we have this one, which is page 170. Okay, and then the last thing is this box here. It's kind of crushed. But it says page 121. And that's everything. Oh, and there's also a signed book plate for the book as well. Okay, so that's everything in this box. Okay, now to open my a totally booked crate. Okay, opening it up, it looks like this. It does look like there's a little bit of the ink from the tissue paper got on the lid. I hope everything's okay inside. Okay, there are two cards in here. Not sure why there's two cards. <clears throat> oh, it looks like they com she combined because I know she was like way behind. It looks like she combined the December and February crates together. So December was Dangerous Games and February is Betrayals and Belonging. So let's open it up. Okay, we have some thing here. I don't know what it is. It's like a tapestry maybe. A wall hanging. Don't know how to open it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to like lay this out on the floor somewhere and flip it around so I can show you because it's rather large. Hold on. Okay, so it's got like a Starry Nights vibe to it. This right here is just the shadow, but it says, 
When you can't beat the odds, change the games. And that's from Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. And I think that is really pretty. I really do. Bega is a big fan of Starry Night, so this may be something that she actually likes. So I will have to see if that's something she wants. Okay, let's see what else we got in here. We have the Crowns Game Salt Caramel Hot Cocoa. Yum. This is a Totally Book Crate exclusive. Looks like that. And then, oh, something's wet. Okay, it's a candle. And it's in a metal tin, so it doesn't really matter that it's wet. This is a Totally Book Crate exclusive. It's Catherine's Poison Chocolates. Chocolate, blood orange, spices, and berries. Looks like that. And it's brown. It's, yeah. It smells a little bit like chocolate. I do get a little hint of berry. And yeah, it's spicy. So it's pretty well described there. <laughs> okay, oh. We have a Pen, and I think this is a Caraval thing, maybe. No, it's a an Ace of Shades inspired enamel pen. It says, pick a card, stake your soul. Okay. Yeah, my lighting's not great in this position. Oh, well. It'll be fine. Okay, next we have another candle. This one is... Tamlin's Tears, and it's by Flickerwick. Salty Drops and Obsessive Love. And it looks like that. Ooh. And this one's covered in glitter. Hmm. It's very fresh. Kind of soapy. Mm. And fruity. It smells really good. I like it says the issue isn't whether he loved you it's how much love can be poison okay next we've got oh this is wet too but it's in plastic so katsune soap inspired by shadow of the fox by julie kagwa and it's just like an orangish red color soap kind of smells fruity could also be from the candle because it was right next to it. And then we've got this little box. This little box is definitely um, wet. Oh, cute! It's a little necklace. It's like a little bee necklace. It's quite adorable. And let's see what this says. This is a moth necklace inspired by Strange the Dreamer. Cool. I haven't read that book, but that's a cute little necklace. Okay, then we have the books. And luckily the books are in plastic too, so I don't think they're damaged. Though I see something that kind of bums me out a little bit. Because uh, I figured out what um, the fantasy book was going to be for February and I asked her about it to confirm that that's what it was and I already had one copy of this book I actually got an arc of it back in November and so because I knew what it was and I didn't really want a physical like a regular hardcover of it I asked her to swap my subscription from the fantasy to the contemporary and I got it before she placed her order and either she forgot or something because I still got the book. But what's even worse is I also got that book in like an owl crate box as well. So now I have three copies of this book. And that is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Preto. So yeah. It's signed. It's red. It says, I had a sister once. In a world ruled by fierce warrior queens, a grand empire was built upon the backs of phoenix riders. Legendary warriors who soar through the sky on wings of fire until a war between two sisters ripped it all apart. I promised her the throne would not come between us. 
16 years later, Veronica is a war orphan who dreams of becoming a Phoenix Rider like the heroes of old. After a shocking betrayal from her controlling sister, Veronica strikes out alone to find the Riders, even if that means disguising herself as a boy to join their ranks. But it is a fact of life that one must kill or be killed, rule or be ruled. Just as Veronica finally feels like she belongs, her sister turns up and reveals a tangled web of lies between them that will change everything. And meanwhile, the new empire has learned of the writer's return and intends to destroy them once and for all. Sometimes the title of queen is given, sometimes it must be taken. Crown of Feathers is an epic fantasy about love's incredible power to save or to destroy. Interspersed throughout is the story of Alvakira Ashfire, the last writer queen, who would rather see her empire burn than have it fall into her sister's hands. I guess this is maybe the letter that goes along with it. It says, Dear Reader, when I wrote Crown of Feathers, I was in the midst of a new beginning. I'd put my most recent manuscript away for good, had pa parted ways with my agent, and had quit a day job that was making me miserable. It was time to start over. I needed to reconnect with my love of writing, so I went back to the books I loved to read. Epic fantasies, like Tamora Pierce's Tortal books. I knew I wanted to recreate the feeling I had when I lost myself in those worlds. It's easy to see now, looking back at what I've written, how Pierce's strong, brave, and honorable heroines left their mark on my main character, Veronica. It's also no wonder the imagery of the phoenix... A creature that goes down in flames only to resurrect itself again resonated so strongly with me at the time. I hope you enjoy losing yourself in the world of Crown of Feathers. Okay, and then the December book is Fire and Heist by Sarah Beth Durst. And I think I'm saying that right. There is a card here. I'm guessing maybe goes with this or the other one. I don't know. And we also have a sticker here that says, they believe that objects have souls. The more love you put into one, the more beautiful it becomes. And this beautiful, um, like laminated bookmark says when, oh, I think somebody made a mistake. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to say, when kingdom come, there will be one. But it says, when kingdom come, there's no N in kingdom. But it is a beautiful bookmark. Um, and it's from that bookie bookmarks. And it's a totally book crate exclusive. Which I thought this reminded me of the bookie bookmarks. But oh my goodness. The error. <laughs> right there. The kingdom come. <laughs> okay. So fire and heist. Let's see. It's like yellow and black. This says... Leading your first heist is a major milestone in Sky Hawkins family, even more so than learning to talk, walk, or do long division. It's a chance to gain power and acceptance within society, but stealing your first treasure can be complicated, especially when you're a wyron, a human capable of transforming into a dragon. Embarking on a life of crime is never easy, and Sky's mission uncovers deep secrets about the mother who recently went missing, the real reason her boyfriend broke up with her, and a valuable jewel that could restore her family's wealth and rank in their community. With a hand-picked crew by her side, Skye knows she has everything she needs to complete her first heist and get back to the people she loves in the process. But instead, she ends up discovering a dark truth about where dragon society, a truth that is more valuable and dangerous than gold or jewels could ever be. And this seems like a rather short book. This is weird. Like, I noticed when I was, like... Had it like this. I don't know if you can see it. But there's like this little dark line. And I thought maybe it was like an illustration or something. So I turned to that page. I think it's like a printing error. There's a couple of pages that have like that. Alright. So this is only 290 pages. Yeah. 290. That is so weird though. Eh. It's fine. And I think she had something else that was supposed to go in here. It looks like a, a keychain, but I guess it didn't come in or something, so they, she marked it out. Yeah, instead of Crown of Feathers, I was supposed to get the contemporary one, which was Fame, Fate, and the First Kiss by Casey West, which I have heard about. Okay, so their March theme is Starlight and Wicked Fae. 
This crate is inspired by our favorite fairies, Faye and Pixies, who are sarcastic, sassy, and have what the TBC team calls fair fairytude. This crate will appeal to fans of A Court of Thorns and Roses, The Wicked King, and Tinkerbell. And then this is what our cards look like. I'm happy that everything came out okay and nothing's like messed up from the rain. That would really suck. All right, well, I'm going to go for now and I'm not sure if I'm going to paint right now or not because, yeah, probably not for a little while because in about half an hour, Xander and I are going to go back to reading or listening to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows because I want us to finish this tonight. And I think we have about two hours left, something like that, at the speed that we're listening to it. And tomorrow I want to watch the movies. And I need to write Zoe because, oh my gosh, things are happening in the book and I can't believe they're happening. And I've just been so emotional over, oh, so emotional over this book. But also to remind her that we have our Potter Watch show this weekend to make sure all of that is still on schedule. And maybe tonight after I get Xander in bed, I'll paint. <laughs> we'll see. All right, I'll talk to you later. So it is around 11.30, I think. Oh, 11.42 on Thursday. March 28th. I keep forgetting the month. <laughs> Tonight Xander and I finished Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows and oh my gosh like there was a lot that happened in here that I was just not not prepared for and it it it, it hurt my heart. <laughs> uh, tomorrow Xander and I will be watching the two movies that go along with this book. Ah, oh, not ready for that either. But I'm getting ready to go to bed. I thought I would take this book with me and I haven't read any more since um, the last time I checked in as far as this goes. But I'm currently on page 18 of this. So I'd like to go and just lay down in bed and read this for a little while and uh, pass out and um, tomorrow I'm not sure what all I want to get done I know that I have the movies to watch with Xander Xander's got a doctor's appointment and I have a video that I need to finish uh, editing I started editing it already but I'm only like about halfway through it and I still need to finish that and get it uploaded and all of that good stuff and then maybe just maybe I'll get to painting. Oh gosh, probably not. Oh my goodness. Because tomorrow I should probably get to bed early because Saturday is going to be a 24 hour readathon. Cause um, Zoe over at Red by Zoe, yeah. <laughs> She's hosting a 24 hour readathon and it has a theme. I think it's like gratitude or something like that. I don't precisely remember, but I plan on knocking this out, I think, during that 24 hour readathon. We'll see. I don't know. But yeah. So I have to get some good sleep Friday so I can wake up Saturday and read for 24 hours. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to include that in this or if I'm going to do a separate video for that. I have to think about it. All right. I'm gonna go. I'll talk to you tomorrow. So it's a little after 11.30 on a Friday, March 28th. And not Friday, March 28th, Friday, March 29th. <laughs> and um, if I look half asleep, it's because I literally just woke up. I, um, I uh, took a nap. Um, for about like an hour and a half because well in about the 30 minutes well now I think it's like more like 20 minutes because yeah it's 11:39. so in about 20 minutes Zoe over read by Zoe's 24-hour readathon will begin and I'm 
going to participate in that. I'm actually going to be doing a separate video for that, though I'm going to continue with this video as well. I decided that when I'm doing my Once Upon a Book Club book for my 24-hour readathon, I'll still do my check-ins for that, but when it comes time to opening the gifts, I'll do it in this video. So, it'll be fine. I'll figure it out. <laughs> but anyway, I took a nap to prepare, and um, I don't know if that was a good idea or a bad idea. All I know is I'm really freaking tired right now. Okay, so let me tell you where I am as far as my reading goes. I read just the tiniest bit of The Night Olivia Fell by Christina McDonald. And I'm currently on page 23, so yeah, really just getting started with this. And I listened to a good bit more of Lola and the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins. I am currently on page 172 of this. And I can't remember if I told you or not, but Thursday, Xander and I finished Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, and I give this five stars. I'm not okay with everything that happened in here. I actually, we watched both movies last night and uh, I cried at a certain part because uh, I'm just not okay with it. <laughs> but it was really, really good. I love this whole series and I actually really look forward to rereading it again sometime in the future because I have a feeling that I'm just, I'm going to enjoy, I want to like binge read all of them back to back to back to back and not have to like wait a month in between like I was doing and I want to do the same thing with the movies. So yeah, I have a feeling this is going to be one of the series that I, I read a few times and uh, I guess that's it for now. I've got to start my filming for the 24 hour readathon and wake myself up. And it starts now in 13 minutes. So I'm going to go and I will just check in with you later. So it is currently a little after six o'clock in the morning. And just to fill you in on how I've done with my reading so far, I actually finished Lola and the Boy Next Door and I gave this four stars. I really, really enjoyed it. It was really cute. And I have been reading The Night Olivia Fell by Christina McDonald, and I'm very much enjoying this. I'm currently on page 115, and I've gotten to the place for the first gift, which the sentence says, He thrust an arm under and pulled out a small white plate, one from the kitchen set downstairs. It had been used as an ashtray, a cigarette crushed in the middle of a pile of cement gray ash. So I'm guessing this is the plate. So this is what we have here. Ooh. And I have a Tigger. He just jumped up in my lap. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. There's a few things in this box. Okay, so this is a little weird. All right, the plate is cool. It says choose happy. It's very pretty. I like it. But that wasn't all that was in the box. There's also what looks like a cigarette. But it is not a cigarette. It's actually a pen. I don't know how I feel about that. It's so weird. <laughs> I don't know why they included that. They could have just included the plate. Okay, so well, that's really it for my check-in for now. Now I have to go and do my check-in for the 24-hour readathon vlog. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, so it is currently about 11:30 on Sunday, March 31st, and I didn't check in again with the 24-hour read like during the 24-hour readathon yesterday because I didn't get to another part. Um, where I open a gift in this book, but I did want to tell you, you know, where I'm at as far as my reading goes at this point. So, yesterday, I started out with Lola and the Boy Next Door, and I was, at that point, I was at, like, page 172. I finished this, 
when I started yesterday, I was on page uh, like 20 something of this, yeah, 23. And I managed to get to page 187 of The Night Olivia Fell. I'm really, really enjoying this. This is Sasha going back and forth across my lap here. Also, I listened to the audiobook of A Question of Homes by Brittany Cavallaro, which is the fourth book in the Charlotte Holmes series, and I gave that four stars. I think that was probably my favorite out of all of the uh, Charlotte Holmes books. Though it's kind of tied with the uh, A Case for Watson or A Case of Watson or something like that, which was, I think, the second book. I really enjoyed that one as well. I forgot to tell you, I gave this one four stars as well it was super cute i liked it a lot and xander and i started reading harry potter and the cursed child and we got to page 49 of this so i'm doing pretty good i think my goal is to for the next couple of hours read as much of the night olivia fell as i possibly can because i really 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 want to finish this today don't know if that's going to happen let's see I'm on page 187 and it goes to 339 so I have like I don't know 152 pages so maybe I can get it done today but I only have a couple of hours right now because me and Marty and Xander are all going to go and see a double feature we're gonna go to the movies and we're gonna watch us which is like creepy scary thriller kind of movie and um, then when that's over, we're going to go watch Dumbo in 3D. Pretty much just doing the 3D thing because of the time that we want to see the movie. The only, unless we wanted to wait at the theater for a big gap in between, we have to go and see the 3D one. I think that will be over around 6.30ish. So then we'll pick up some food and come home and I'll still have a couple of hours that I can read. So hopefully I can get that finished. All right, well, I guess I will just check in with you later. So we just got home from the movies and we have some food that we picked up on the way home. But while we were there, I was reading, or on our way there, on our way back, in between the movies, I was reading The Night Olivia Fell. And I'm to my next gift. And it says, he handed me a small wrapped present. Open it. I unwrapped the pink paper and lifted the lid on the box. Inside was a, well, I'm not gonna say what was inside because we're gonna open up the gift and see for ourselves, which I have right here. Let's slide this off. Okay. Oh, wow, this is really nice. Really nice. Oh, this is so nice, okay. It's a charm bracelet, and it kind of reminds me of the um, Pandora charm bracelets. It looks like this. It's got a little book dangling on it, and this little charm here says, she believed she could, so she did. And then there's this little charm here that says, okay, DS and that's uh, her initials and his initials and oh, I love this oh and the 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 back the little clasp thing it's a little heart dangling from a chain cute this is really really nice so now I'll finish reading what it says here I unwrapped the pink paper and lifted the lid on the box. Inside was a tiny silver heart charm with our initials etched on either side. I know you always wear the bracelet your mom got you, so I thought I, you could add this charm to it. So this is the bracelet that her mom got her, and then he got her the little charm. Cool. And now I'm going to have to take a break from reading this because it's time to do some reading with Xander. So we're going to read... Harry Potter and the Cursed Child until it's time for him to go to bed. And then I have to work on his, my lesson plan for next week because it's Sunday night. And then I've got to stay up really late because I, I really want to finish this tonight. So that was page 222. So I still have a little over 100 pages. I can't remember exactly what page it ends on. 339. So 
117 pages. Yep, I still got a ways to go. But I think I can get my lesson planning done fairly quick and then I can stay up to like midnight or something like that and read. All right, I'll check in with you later. So it's a quarter after 11. I haven't gotten a huge amount of reading done since the last time I checked in, but I did get some reading that was Xander. We continued Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and got to page 81 of this. And I got a little bit of The Night Olivia Fell read. And I'm currently on page 251 of this and it's time for our next gift. It says, I stood abruptly and grabbed a small bottle of lotion from a drawer near Olivia's head. So we get into our box here. I'm guessing it's lotion. And here's our gift for 251. And it's Olivia's hand lotion. And it just says it's fragrance free, paraben free. O2 Oxygen Body Lotion. So this is what it looks like on this side. On the other is a sticker that says Olivia's Hand Lotion. And there's even a safety seal. All right, so yeah, I've got this much left. 88 pages left. Hopefully I can get it done tonight. I'm going to try. Plus there's still one more gift left and that's for Paige. 338 which is like the next to the last page so I have one more gift to open I'll probably end up doing my wrap-up for this week tomorrow morning but I'm gonna get back to reading now and I'll check in with you in a little bit oh my goodness <laughs> this book is so good so there was only like this much left of the whole book when I got to the open your gift so I went ahead and finished it I give this five stars. I loved it. So where this post it was for opening your gift, it says, reached inside a large plastic bag and pulled out a framed picture, setting it on the ground in front of Zoe and me. So let's open up our gift. Oh, this book got me. It's Zoe. The baby. So yeah, this, this, this is very much a, not, not so much a thriller as it is more of a mystery and you're constantly, constantly trying to figure out who did it. And in my head, who, who I thought did it was constantly changing. Yeah, I, I would think it was one person and then like two pages later, I was thinking it was somebody else. And um, yeah, this was really, really good. I highly recommend it. Okay, it's now like, a quarter after two in the morning. I'm tired. I'm gonna go to bed and I will wrap this thing up in the morning. Good night. Okay, so it is Monday, April 1st, which means sequel-a-thon is officially over and it is time to start the magical read-a-thon. So let me wrap up what I read this week. So to start off, Xander and I finished reading Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows, and I give this five stars. The whole series got five stars. It was all so good, and it was such a cool experience getting to go through this with Xander and doing the Potter Watch along with all of you. And we're not quite done with Potter Watch, but getting there. Next, in the sequel-a-thon, I read Lola and the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins, and I gave this four stars. I also really enjoyed it. And after that, I listened to the audiobook of A Question of Homes by Brittany Cavallaro and gave that four stars. I read The Night Olivia Fell by Christina McDonald and I give this five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. I really, really did. It was so good. And then Xander and I started reading Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and we got to page 81 of this so not a terrible reading week not at all and I'm looking forward to getting into the rest of my magical readathon stuff this the night Olivia fell completed my charms I got the extra credit last year I got to do five days which I didn't take full advantage of the five days but I did manage to finish it during those five days so 
when owls down and uh, I have four more to go to complete my job and I think after that or when I'm getting close to being done with that if I still have a lot of time left in the month and I've gotten all my books out and stuff then I'll do another magical readathon TBR where I show what I'm gonna read for the other owls so kind of keep an eye out for that I'd love to hear about your week did anything interesting happen did you read any amazing books comment down below and let me know well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you.